The 10-Minute Drill. This is a big one. It's brought to you by All Pro Roofing. All Pro Roofing LLC.com on 1010XL. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. Yes. This is the Sports Concepts and Rationalizations. We call it the 10-Minute Drill. At the end of the drill, hey. we're going to take it easy, aren't we, Beef? Oh, that's correct. And at the end of the 10-Minute Drill, stay tuned. One Lucky Guggen going to go home with a pair of tickets to... Go see uh, Classic Albums Live two weeks from tomorrow, Saturday, November 20th, doing the music of the Eagles. I think specifically Hotel California, Dan. Yes. Uh, they're just going to play that one song on repeat. No, I kid. The album. Uh, front to back, down uh-huh. at the Florida Theater. So stay tuned. All right. Well, lots, lots going on in the world of sports. Lots to kick around here on this, uh, on this football Friday. Um, OBJ expected to be released today on his 29th birthday. I, I, I'm... Jag fan, don't bother texting us that the Jags should sign OBJ. There are a few of you out there. Y'all, uh, no. 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 That's slightly uh, less crazy than the guy who called me saying the Jags need to put a waiver claim in on Henry Ruggs. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. But no, I don't want OBJ anywhere near. He'll poison the pool. He's a I, – I, to be honest with you, is OBJ done? Who would sign him? I don't How know. could you sign him? I mean, and I'm not talking about forget his personality or this 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 little dust up. I just mean like production wise, he's no yeah. good. Yeah, that's the problem with OBJ. And yeah, you're not being targeted by Baker Mayfield because well, you're not open enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Despite your daddy finding you know seven examples where you were. Do we expect uh, James Robinson to play Sunday? No, I don't. But he yeah. could. I guess. I guess it is an injury that that. Hasn't practiced all week. Right, but I guess that makes sense. Why would you practice him if it's a heel injury? You want it to get his I, – I do know this, that if he doesn't play, they go from a fat chance to no chance. Like, without James Robinson, they have 0% chance, chance, chance of winning. to no chance. Yeah, from fat chance to no chance. Okay, all right. And I think it's fat chance with James Robinson. I mean, I look at the teams the Jaguars have played uh-huh. and how they've done – and this team is so much better than it. With all due respect to the Cardinals and their record or any of them, the Bills have the number one defense in the league, scoring and yardage-wise. And they have an offensive arsenal that we'd need to borrow two or three from, and they would still have the better squad. So, I, I, don't, see any, I don't see any bright side to Sunday, man. No. I don't. And hopefully James Robinson plays at least that way you can c- attempt to – control the football a little bit and control the clock. Look, I don't know what Miami was able to do so specifically that held the Bills to three points in the first half last week. If you could somehow recreate that, I guess. But I'm losing patience and, you know, with the answers. And, the you know, I'm going to get to the point here where Urban and his postgame, you know, monotones are going to start to sound a lawful light. Like, that's what it starts to sound like, right? When you're when you're losing and you've lost the fan. But, mm, that's kind of where I am on that. And I definitely, I'm tired of this. I cannot hear these three words from my head coach anymore. I didn't know. Wow. It's one thing to be honest. It's another, every time you're in, <laughs> on a coach's shirt somewhere else, there comes up something about the NFL that I didn't know. I didn't know they were this fast. I didn't know they were this. I didn't know they were that. Well, we did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know I think I think an early season storyline in the NBA is becoming the struggles of what were last year very good teams yeah right who who won the championship last year who won the Bucks? yeah the Bucks won Bucks Knicks beef, can, tonight beef can you give me the Bucks record so far the Tampa Bay Buccaneers no the Milwaukee Buccaneers oh the Milwaukee they're Buccaneers four four. yes they're struggling four four. a little bit out of the game that's terrible right not the good. Atlanta Hawks played the Bucks in the Eastern Conference uh, Championship Finals. What's their record? Uh, they're, they're actually both teams are uh, four. Uh, the, they're four and five. The Hawks four and five. Yeah, they're Bucks four, and are four five. four and four. Yeah. How about now the preseason favorites somehow? And again, I know it's because of the star power. Were the were the Lakers? What? So they must be eight. They, one. they blew a nineteen point lead last night at home to the Thunder, and uh, now five and four. Haven't they done that yes. twice? Well, the last week in Oklahoma City, they blew a 26-point lead. Yeah. The Thunder have won two games, Dan, both massive comebacks against the Lakers. Oh, <laughs> They'd be 0-8 if not for the L.A. Lakers. Uh, Bron's out for a week or so, right? LeBron's hurt. Yeah, he's got an uh, abdominal thing. He's out for a week. The, the he didn't play I, last night. I, does anyone believe the Lakers have any chance to win it? I thought I always thought a team with LeBron had a chance. I don't think that the Lakers have a chance. They're old, man. They are old. And the, and the problem with getting old is they're going to continue to be out. Like, you can, you can, you're right. Like, what can happen is 
you can sit them a ton during the regular season and stumble in in the in the five seed or six seed. But here's the problem: the playoffs you can't sit them. The playoffs are a long, and then they get hurt there they like they hurt. did last year, right? And then they're done. So, but I mean, I'm looking at some of what were some of the really good teams last year. You know, playoff teams. You got Milwaukee four and four. The Celtics are four and five. The Hawks are four and five. Brooklyn is only five and three. Mm-hmm. Um, the Suns, you know, went to the finals. They're only four and three. Denver's four and four. The Lakers are five and four. I mean, those are a lot of really good teams that are just stumbling around 500, and we're, you know, 10 games in. We're an eighth of the way through. Pelicans are one and eight. The Rockets are one and seven, and the Pistons are one and seven. Same old, same old. Boy, the Pelicans. Uh, uh, no Zion. When does Zion start saying, eh, yeah, I'd like this to go somewhere else? Well, Zion's got to be playing. Zion yeah, doesn't need to be hurt getting... a lot. Zion's fat. He does look kind of. He's yeah, fat. Yeah. He got fat. He does look hefty. I mean, Chuck and Shaq <laughs> kidding the other night. Chuck said. And those are two fat guys like we themselves. made a baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Zion looks like. Which is like. crazy because in the offseason, he got shredded. Yeah, but did you see the picture of Zion, like his team photo versus like a year ago? Right. Yeah. But like in the off season, uh-huh. yeah, he was in the best that, shape of his life. Is that when he hurt his foot though? It might have been when he got hurt, and then yeah. apparently just got into the donuts. Like the what do you what do you eat those the down beignets. there? The beignets. The yeah. beignets. Every time you see him, he's just covered in powdered sugar. Yeah. Uh, you know the story in the NBA uh, yesterday is another you know rogue owner being accused of just being a bad human being is what right. they're accusing him of. But Robert Sarver is the owner of the Phoenix Suns. He has been for seventeen years. Wasn't there a, a similar? expose to this on the Phoenix organization like five, six, eight years ago. I'm almost positive I read something. I don't know if it was ESPN or one of the other ones. That was a deep dive into the culture of the Phoenix Suns. And now they've gone, you know, a step further. They have quoted a former Suns coach that, they, they you know, used to be uh, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can end your career. That should be the new phrase. Yeah. Right? It used to be sticks and stones can break your bones, but names can never hurt me. Well, yeah. now sticks and stones can break your bones, but your words will do far more damage than whatever sticks and stones hit you. Yeah. And so you better, if you're young right now and starting on your career, or if you're old and came from a different era, you best understand that. Yeah, Earl Watson shredded him. Yeah. He also shredded the Suns to about 20 wins this year, but yeah. 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 He did. He basically said, you can't say that. And this guy made the mistake that a lot of white people do. They say, so-and-so says this word, I'm going to say it. Or why can so-and-so say this yeah. word and I can't say it? Yeah, I, you know, yeah, what is that? What does that have to do with anything? Well, real, that other quote from the hiring just process say. was right. just... How hard uh, is it? The quote from the hiring process was just uh, the most damning I didn't. What was that one? I didn't... I didn't. Well, that was, that was when he was explaining why he chose Watson over uh, Dan Marley, who at the time was a five-year... Uh, assistant with the Suns, uh-huh. and he said, these blanks need a blank. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Well, who, who's quote? I mean, where, where are these, like, on tape or well, they talked people's they, recollections? They, they interviewed they got, multiple. Yeah, 70-plus yeah. people. So usually if you get 70, it kind of reminds me of the uh, Carolina Panthers deposed owner. Yeah. Was it Jerry Richardson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar. Or suddenly that, they said, "Yeah, Jerry, you need to go away." Yeah, that's that's a that's a great. That's kind uh, of that analogy. story came out how he treated people. In, and and, and his, by the way, if Sarver were smart, he would just go away. Just well, and Don Sterling. Bound. And Donald Sterling. Now, well, Don Donald Sterling, Sterling had on the, tape. Yeah, that was yeah. different. Yeah, and but another, right. it's like it's like you got to go, boss. Yeah, it's time to check out. Someone else is going to buy this team from you. So anyway, yeah. there yeah. was there was that from the NBA yesterday, and you know, here are the Phoenix Suns that are in the you know. One of the brightest spots of their franchise history, coming off a trip to the finals, yeah. and all those teams, and and now instead it's, you know, it's dealing with all this. Uh, all right, we talked in the break a little bit about, or I did downtime about Buster Posey. Yeah. So, and he went out. He's such a classy dude, right? And he and he is. If you listen to any of his speech yesterday, I caught a little bit of it. It was tremendous. You know, some of his highlights, what he'd been through. You. Being here in the East, we forget about all the great moments that the Giants have had over the last decade. I mean, unless you're a, a Giants fan. 10, 12, 14 world champions. And I mean, just some incredible stuff. Like, you know, Mad Bum strolling out to pitch game seven against the Royals and just being unhittable in that well, he came, And he also came in one of those years like with no rest, like pitched the game before and came in That's and what closed. He did. I mean, Mad Bum basically yeah, closed, said, yeah. Jump on, boys. We're going to win this thing. 
And uh, what's the kid's name? Kane, Matt Kane. Ma- he- uh, it's not. Is it Matt? Yeah, Matt Kane. Yeah, I think he threw a perfect game. He was good. The uh, Tim Lincecum was the was the. Yeah, he's the headliner. If yeah. Posey's not the Hall of Famer for that group, it's it's Lincecum. Right, Lincecum has more Hall of Fame. But you credit. said something that was interesting. You said, "Is he a uh, who's a Hall of Famer from that Giants dynasty?" It's him. It's Posey. Who else would it be? It could be Lincecum. Yeah, it would be him or Lincecum. I appreciate Mad Bum and his rush, but I mean, you want to start putting stats into the equation? I, in my mind, Mad Bum is like 120 wins, isn't he? Probably. What? It's more. I just picture like those World Series. It was the one teams. series, but it was just the one beef. And I hear what you're saying because he he he, he so dominated valid. that one. Well, but Lincecum was the ace in the 10 and 12, wasn't he? Posey, Posey played 1,093 games as a catcher, 229 at first, and 31 as a DH. Um, so he's a catcher. His, his uh, 302, 372, 460 um, is 29% better than the average hitter at the catcher spot. If he were a designated hitter or first baseman, they say that probably wouldn't be good enough. Well, but he's not, and he also had a very, was very high rate of throwing runners out, too, in his prime. I haven't even gotten to that. Yeah. During the course of his career, the league average for caught stealing rate was 27. Posey was 33. So better than average. But winning the World Series matters, Dan. You can't just measure those stats like the Giants win 82 no, and he goes do, home. I think if you just do stats, you would say, no. Correct. If I read you these stats and said, is this guy a Hall of Famer? You would say, no. I agree. I agree with that. But it's not just 1,500 hits, 158 home runs. But you're leaving out things. Rookie of the year, MVP. I understand that. Those matter. He was the very best player in the game for one year. 34th in hits as a catcher, 25th in doubles, 40th in home runs. Doesn't matter to me. Not not Hall of Fame stats. Yeah, doesn't matter He does not have Hall of Fame stats. If you're going to go strictly by the stats, then yeah, I would would agree. And by the way, just for the record, uh, Bumgarner, 127 and 106. Yeah, so with a 331 not, career ERA. 331 is pretty good. Yeah, but 127 and 106 is just okay. I understand that. Things are going to change for pitchers going forward. Yeah, I don't He's a four time All Star, three times world champion, and uh, MVP of the 14 World Series yeah. and NLCS. Mm-hmm. Right. He had a great 14 postseason. So to it. your point, yeah, 14 was where he was just the monster. Yeah. And I'm not saying he, 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 he can't be a Hall of Famer. Matt Bum has got some. Some cred, but to me, he's... Posey well, never allowed more than five pass balls in a season. Uh, that's one every 344 innings in his career. You want to put that in perspective, Yachty, the gold standard, gave up one pass ball every 186 innings. Well, he also, uh, Posey, has caught more postseason shutouts than any catcher in history. Mm-hmm. I mean, and catchers get a little bit of credit in for those. In war reference, Posey's 16th all-time among catchers. He's below the average Hall of Fame catcher. Uh, but catcher's pretty underrepresented in the hall. So I just in my again, I'm not always right. I'm I can't just telling you that's going to be a good debate. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I don't. Yeah. Know. To me, and, he's and, a hall of famer. If you're uh, asking me, uh, I'm just taking it from this point. I'm not going to be you know prepare a speech for him. Mm-hmm. But if you're asking me, is Buster Posey a hall of famer or no? To me, he's a first ballot hall of famer. Mm-hmm. There's not. Tell me a better catcher in our generation. By the uh, way, those all those metrics, the hall of fame probability metrics. Yeah. Uh, Madbum way below average. Yeah. On those. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's on par say, with guys like uh, Cole Hamels, Jake Peavy. Hall of very good guys. Yeah. I would say Buster Posey is a Hall of Famer in my book. I don't know if he goes into the first ballot. Yeah. And he, and he probably won't. In my mind, he is. I mean, he is the glue, the backbone, literally at the catcher position of three world champions yes. in six years. You know, and he was the guy. And you know, in that period, also, he also was a, had a rookie a, of the year and he an MVP. He also was involved in a play <clears throat> that made baseball change a yeah. rule. Yeah. He was the kid, he was the catcher. Did he get his leg broken on it? Yes. He got run over, and baseball said, you know what? That's enough. We're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to have any more Ray Fosseys or Buster Poseys. And I think Posey came back the next year and won the MVP, if I'm not mistaken. But he broke his leg early in his career, and that's when baseball decided to change the you gotta, you can't block the plate, you can't run over the catcher, you've got to sort of position yourself. Uh, you're correct, Dan. He only appeared in 45 games. In 2011, had the broken leg, came back in 12, had a monster year, hit 336, mm-hmm. and was the uh, NL MVP. Yeah. Well, the Jaguars put no waiver claim in on Deshaun Jackson. He's now a free agent. Should they not go sign Deshaun Jackson? Why would you not? Why would we have Tavon Austin and not Deshaun Jackson? What is the upside to that move? I don't know. I mean, I'm fine. We'll see. Um, let's end the, uh, the drill with my favorite oh. quote of yesterday. Okay. I love a quote. Cordell Patterson has had an unbelievable kind Um, of. Corderell. Okay, but 
anyway, he's had an unbelievable turn in his career here. Like the he last has- few years, well, yeah, he's he's playing some running back. You don't watch the Falcons, I do. Danny looks like an unbelievable running back. He doesn't get a ton of carries. I I wonder if they put Cordero Patterson in the backfield and okay. handed him the ball twenty seven times what it would look like. I mean, he's just been very good, but he's been a, a Swiss Army knife. He's played at wide receiver, kick returner, and running back. Yeah. He has not been, you know, relegated to just one. And he was asked about how difficult it is splitting time at three positions, and this is what he said. If my mom could go out there and work three jobs, I could go out there and play three positions. Why can't I do what she did for us? It's like big motivation. Every time I'm on the field, I don't care where they put me, I'm going to make a play. You can put me at safety. I'm getting an interception. Put me at DN. I'm going to get a sack. That's just the mindset I have. Nobody can take that confidence away from me. It's uh, amazing. Minnesota, Oakland, New England, Chicago, uh, Atlanta. He just goes everywhere. And- look, look at his numbers this year. What does he have? Does he have 300 rushing yards? 268. He's got a lot of touchdowns, like total, either running, catching, whatever yeah. it is. He's-, He's got 64 totes for 268. So that's what four four carry. He also has thirty two catches. Yeah, how many? He's touchdowns? always been a productive player. I bet he has six seven touch- touchdowns. Yeah, that's a lot of two touchdowns. rushing, five receiving. That's a lot of touchdowns. He's been a very good weapon uh, for the Falcons so far this year. All right, let's take it easy and give it to caller Woo! number one today. Six four one ten ten. Beef, tell them what they're going to win if they dial in quickly. Call number one right now. Fast fingers. Six four one ten ten. Going to go home with a pair of tickets to Classic Albums Live coming up. Two weeks from tomorrow, that's Saturday, November 20th, at the Florida Theater. They're doing the music of the Eagles, and you'll get a pair on us if you're caller one right now. 641-1010.